In this video, I'll be showing you my easy countdown formula in Notion that is a great addition to your tasks, goals, and projects databases. So here we have an example projects database that I've set up just for the purpose of this video. So it's quite a simple database. We just have the name of the project, the due date for the project. This is the countdown formula that I'm going to be showing you how to build today. And then simply just a checkbox so that you can mark the project as complete once you're done. So as you can see, the countdown formula looks a little bit different on the different projects. And that's all because of the due date. So if the due date is in the future, it will show a green countdown like this, and it will count down how many days to go until the due date for the project. If the due date is today, so today for me is March 14th. So if it's today, it will show due today in blue. And if the date here is a past date, then it will show in red and it will tell you how many days overdue the project is. Another really cool thing about this formula is that if you check off the markers complete checkbox, it will then change to completed. Now I do actually have a really similar countdown formula on my second brain template, which is an all in one productivity system. So I actually use this formula on my projects and goals databases. So as you can see, it displays here on these cards. And if you are interested, in this template at all, then I will leave a link in the description box below where you can grab it. And in the rest of this video, I will be showing you how to create this countdown formula here from scratch and how you can apply it to your existing tasks, goals, or projects databases. Okay, so I am starting off with a really simple database. So I'm sure most people watching this video already have a database similar to this. So as I said, it could be a task or a to-do list database, a projects database like this one, or even a goals database. So in the first column, I've simply just got the name of the project in this case. We've got a date property here where I've inputted the due date for this project. And I've also just added a checkbox here so that I can check the project off once it is complete. So this is the database that I'm gonna be using today. And we're simply just gonna add that countdown formula on to here and I'll also show you how we can change it into the gallery view that I showed you in the example. So the countdown is actually a formula so we're going to start by adding a new formula property so you can just click on this plus symbol here type in formula and select this formula property and I'm just going to give this the name of countdown. We then just want to click on the formula edit button here to bring up our panel and this is where we're actually going to type in the formula. So the first thing that we actually want to do within this formula is we actually want to work out the difference in days between our due date and today. So that's going to give us the countdown. So to do that we can actually use the date between function. So I'm simply just going to type in date between like this and then you can grab it here from the sidebar. So it's date between. Now as you can see here it gives us a little description of what the date between function does. So it says that it returns the difference between two dates and the units can be either years, quarters, months, weeks, days, hours, or minutes. So as I said, in this case, we're going to use days because I want to work out the days between now and our due date. So you can simply just type in the two different dates that you want it to work out the difference between and then just the units. So the first date that we want to put in here is our due date. So if you look in the properties here, it's going to bring up all of the properties within the table. So I'm going to start by grabbing our due date and putting that in here. We're then just going to add a comma. And now we need the second date to be today's date. So obviously that's going to change every single day. So we actually just want it to be able to reference whatever today's date is. So we can actually use the now function. So you just want to type in now and then two parentheses like this. And that is going to reference today's date. So this will update automatically every day. So it's quite useful. We're going to add another comma. And the final thing we need to put in here is the unit. So we're going to add two quotation marks like this. And inside we're just going to type days. So this is just telling this function that we want it to work out the difference between these two dates in days. So if I actually just just click done at this point. Let's see what we have. So this is what we currently have. So it does appear to be working correctly. So as I told you today is March 14th, which is why this one is zero. This one is a past one. So it's showing minus 14 and this one is a future date. So it is working correctly. So let's open it back up. So I'm just going to click on here, edit the property and I'm going to click formula edit. So we will actually be referencing this number. So the number of days between our due date and now quite a lot throughout the formula. So I don't actually want to have to type this out every time I want to reference this number. So we can actually turn this into a variable, which in Notion just means that I can give this function here a code name. And whenever I mention that code name, Notion will know that I mean this piece of code. So I therefore just don't have to type it out every single time. So we can actually use the let function to do that. So right at the start, I'm just going to type the word let and then open a parentheses. And I'm just going to close it at the end. And for this final parentheses, I am actually going to place it on the next line. So I'm just going to place my cursor here just before the final parentheses, hold down shift on your keyboard and I'm just going to hit enter twice. Now, the reason we're doing this is because we are going to add some more code in this gap here, and it just makes it a little bit easier to read if we have it on separate lines like this. So that's why we're doing that. Now, the final thing we need to do with this bit of code here is we actually need to give it the code name. So in this case, I'm just going to call it days between. So right here, just before the piece of code, I'm just going to 
type in days between like this and a comma. So this here is the name of the variable or the code word that I can use throughout the rest of the formula to reference this piece of code here. So this is going to save us a lot of time later on. So if I click done at this point, as you can see, there's now nothing showing in that box. And that's because I don't actually have anything in the formula anymore. I'm simply just saying here that days between means this. I'm not actually telling it to display anything in the box. So just to show you how this works, I'm just going to add a comma here. And then just in the blank space here, I'm just going to type in days between. So what I'm doing here is I'm essentially just calling this piece of code. So I'm saying, let's just grab the days between. So the days between is this piece of code, which as I showed you works out the number of days between now and our due date. So I'm calling this piece of code here. So if I do that and click done, as you can see, it's now bringing up that number again. So we have managed to set up this days between variable correctly. So I can just remove that now. Next, we're going to be using the if function so that we can actually display something different in the box, depending on the due date. So if the due date is in the future, I want it to say something along the lines of 46 days to go. However, if the due date is today, then I want it to say something like due today. And if the due date is a past date, then I want it to say something like 14 days overdue. So we actually want to use the if function to do that. The if function will simply test a condition and will return one value for true and another for false. Let's look at an example. So we could say something like if the checkbox is checked, then display the word complete. Otherwise, display the word overdue. So applying that to our example, as I said, we are going to be using some if statements to produce a different output depending on if the date is in the future, in the past or today. So we are going to be using multiple if statements to make this work. So we're actually going to be using the ifs function. So it's ifs like this. And I'm just going to open and close a parentheses. And just as we did earlier, I'm just going to place my cursor in between them. And I'm just going to hit shift enter so that this one goes to the next line. But that's just because we are going to be writing three different statements in here. So I just want to place one on each line so that it's nice and easy to understand. So the first condition that we want to add in here is if this number here is a negative number, therefore it's a past due date. So we actually want to type something along the lines of 14 days overdue. So let's put that into a statement. So what we're going to do is we first you need to grab our days between number because that's the number we're checking if is negative. So I'm just going to call our days between variable like this. So I'm calling this piece of code here and we want to check if this is less than zero. If it's less than zero, it's a past due date. So I'm going to add a comma and now we need to tell the formula what we want it to do if this condition is true. So if it's true, I want it to display the number and then I want it to say days overdue. So again, we can just grab the days between number again. So I'm just just going to type in days between. We're going to add a plus symbol like this and two quotation marks. And inside here, I can type in the actual words that I want to display afterwards. So we're going to add in a space so that there is a space between the number and the text. And I'm just going to type days overdue. And we're just going to add a comma as well at the end. So that is our first statement. So I'm just going to hold down the shift key on my keyboard and hit enter so that we go to the next line. And we can actually write in our next condition here. So the next condition that we want to account for is if the days equals zero. So if it's zero, therefore it's today. So we want it to say due today. So we're going to type in days between to grab our days between number equals equals zero. So we're checking here if this number is equal to zero. You do need to put two equal signs in Notion formulas, a comma, and again, we just need to tell it what we want it to display. So in this case, we don't need to grab the number like we did in this one. We just want it to display the text due today. So we're going to add two quotation marks and inside, I'm just going to put due today and let's just add an exclamation mark as well. And you do need to add a comma right at the end here as well. Now, the next condition is if the number is more than zero, therefore it's a future due date. So we want to say something like 46 days to go. So again, shift and enter to go to the next line. And I'm going to type in days between and this one is going to be if days between is more than zero comma and then we need to tell it what we want it to display so again i need to actually grab the days between number so it would display the number 46 in this case so let's type in days between the plus symbol and two quotation marks and inside we can type in the text so we need to add a space so that there is a space between the number and the text and i'm just going to type days to go and just remember to add a comma at the end of this line so those are all of the conditions that we want to check but with notion formulas you can also give a otherwise option so if actually none of 
these are true, then what do you want it to display in that case? So in our example, if none of these conditions are true, therefore the due date must be empty. That's the only other option. So if the due date is empty, I think it would be useful to say something just like set due date so that I can see easily that I actually need to set a due date. So we're going to hit shift enter again. And in this case, you don't need to type in any conditions. You just need to say what you want it to display if none of the conditions are true. So I'm just going to add in two quotation marks and let's just write the word set due date. So therefore, if the due date is empty, it will just display in this box set due date. So I know what to do. And let's just add an exclamation mark as well. And you don't need a comma after this one because it's the final thing in the formula. Okay, so at this point, let's click done so I can show you what we have. So here is our database. Let me just make that a bit wider. So it's starting to now look a little bit more like what I showed you at the beginning. So in this one, it's a future due date. So it's saying 46 days to go. This one is today's date. So it's saying due today. This one is a past date. So it's telling me how many days overdue it is, which is really nice. Now, the main issue that I'm seeing at this point is that for this past due date one, it is displaying minus 14 days overdue. And I'd rather it just say 14 days overdue. So we can get rid of this negative mark here. So let's just click on here and edit the property again. So we want to have a look at the first condition here as this is the one that is creating the days overdue. And all we need to do is actually just multiply the minus 14 number by negative one. And if you multiply a negative by a negative, it just turns into a positive. So this days between here is actually generating this minus 14 number. So I'm just going to put in the star symbol, which means multiply. And I'm just going to multiply by minus one. So if I just click done, as you can see, it's literally all it's doing here is just removing that negative sign. The next thing that I want to do is if you remember in the example, once you actually check the completed checkbox off, it would actually change the text just to the word completed because I think that would be useful if you have completed the project or the task. You just want this to disappear. I don't want to be able to see how many days overdue it is if it is already completed. So we're going to add that in. So let's just click back on here and edit the property. So all we need to do is actually just add one more condition in our if statements to say if the complete checkbox has been checked, then just to display the words completed. Now we do actually have to add this as the first condition. So we're just going to place our cursor here, shift enter, and I'm just going to add it right at the top here. Now the reason that you have to add it right at the top is because with Notion formulas, if statements follow a hierarchy, so if something meets multiple conditions, it will always follow the rule of the first condition that it meets. So if you add it at the end, then it will probably have followed one of these other rules first. So for this if statement, we firstly need to add in our checkbox so that we can check if it's checked or not. So you'll actually find the properties here in the sidebar. So I've called this one markers complete. So I'm just going to add in the checkbox property and we're going to check if it is checked. So I'm going to type in equals equals true. Now true is used to check if the checkbox is checked and false is used to see if it is unchecked. So this is essentially just saying check if the markers complete checkbox here is checked. So I'm going to add a comma and then we need to tell it what we want it to display in the box if this condition is true. So if the checkbox is checked, then we can just display the words completed and let's just put an exclamation mark and don't forget just to add a comma at the end here. So there should be a comma after every single statement apart from the last one here. So I'm just going to click done. So let's see if this works. So if I check off this one, as you can see, the text changes to completed. So it is working. So the next thing I want to add to this is some styling to the text. So if you remember in the example, it would be green for days to go, blue for due today and red for days overdue. So let's add that in. So again, let's just go back here and edit this property. So I'm going to start by adding some styling to all of the outputs. So the first thing we're going to do is right at the end after this final parentheses here, I'm just going to type the words dot style and this allows us to add styling to the text and you just want to open and close a parentheses and inside we're going to tell it what we want to do. So the first thing we're going to do is add code styling. So if you actually just put two quotation marks like this and a C, that's going to add code styling which essentially just adds a box around it. So let me just click done at this point. So this is what code styling looks like. If I just go back in here, I also want to make the text bold. So if I just write a comma in here, two more quotation marks and a B, B stands for bold. So if I click done, as you can see, the text is now just a little bit thicker. The next thing we want to do is actually change the colors for each individual output. So let's go back into our formula. So let's start with the completed one at the top. So I want this one to be green. So I want the text to be green and I want the background to be a lighter shade of green. So what we need to do is just before this final comma here, we're just going to go in here and type in our dot style, open and close parentheses parentheses and inside we're going to tell it the colors. So I'm going to put two quotation marks like this. I'm going to type green. Now this is referring to the text color. I'm going to add a comma, two more quotation marks, and this one is going to be green underscore background. 
and this one is referring to the background color. So if I just click done at this point, let's show you what that looks like. So I'll check this checkbox and it changes now. So as you can see, the text is green and the background is a lighter shade of green. So these are just Notion's automatic colors. So it's quite good at automatically picking out the right colors for you. So let's go back into the property. Next, let's move on to the next line. And this one is the days overdue. So I want this one to be red text with a red background. So just before that comma there, we're gonna type in dot style, open and close the parentheses. Now this one, as you can see, is already default red text. So I don't actually need to change the text color. I actually just need to change the background color. So I'm gonna type in two quotation marks and red underscore background to add the red background color. For the due today, I want this one to be blue text with a blue Blue background so again just before the final comma we're going to type in dot style open and close parentheses two quotation marks and inside we're going to write blue and that is referring to the text color we're going to add a comma and again two quotation marks and this one is going to be blue underscore background and that's going to be for the background color for the days to go this one i want to be green so just before the final comma i'm going to add dot style like this two parentheses and inside we're going to do two quotation marks and i'm going to type in green and that's referring to the text color a comma two more quotation marks and this one is going to be green underscore background and for the final set due date option i'm just going to leave it as it is so it'll just display red with a gray background now one other thing we need to do before we hit done to make this work is we do actually need to isolate a couple of items in here so let's take a look at this one so because i've added the dot style here at the end this is only actually going to be applied to the days overdue and it's not going to be applied to the number so if i actually isolate this inside parentheses it will be applied to the entire thing so just here before the days between we're going to add a parentheses and then just here after this quotation mark but before the dot style we're going to add one more so this is essentially just kind of packaging this all together into one item and then the dot style with the red background is going to be applied to the entire thing and not just this piece of text here so this one and this one we don't need to alter because there is only one element here as you can see so this one again is the same there's just one element but this one here is two elements we have the days between and then the days to go so I do need to do the same thing so one parentheses here at the start and then one here just before dot style let's hit done and just check that this is all working correctly let me just uncheck this one so this one is the future date so it does say 46 days to go and it is the green color this one is the blue color and this one is the red color so it does seem to be working correctly let's just add a new blank one and as you can see it does come up just telling me to set the due date in that case so that is our formula all set up all complete the final thing that I want to show you how to do is change this into a gallery view because it looks just a little bit nicer I think as a gallery view so to do that you can click on the three dots here we're going to select layout and I'm going to change it to a gallery view and the first thing I want to do here is just change the card preview to page cover and I did actually add a cover photo for each of these projects earlier but you can do that yourself and you can also change the card size if you want it to be bigger or smaller but I'm going to leave it as medium for now let's just click back and go on properties so I want to show these properties on the card so let's start with the due date so I can see when the project is due we'll add our countdown formula and we'll also add the complete checkbox so this is now what it looks like you can add as many of these projects as you like and if you change the due date let's just change it for a little bit further as you can see it will automatically update the countdown and if you mark it as complete it changes to completed so it's a really, really handy system that you can add to any task, to-do list, project or goals database. And that's it. You can check out all of my pre-made Notion templates over on my store, including this super advanced second brain template, which is an all-in-one productivity system. And if you found this video useful, then I'd really appreciate if you could give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as I upload new Notion tutorials every week.